Hello friends and family, it's time for another His Glass Works informative, I hope, video. We're going to be doing stacking wax. And we get to play with fire, but I'm not going to use this. At His Glass Works, we are now selling stacking wax. Now this is not for a game of Jenga. We don't typically sell broken items. This one broke and I've used it and put it back together. But we are gonna use a heat gun. We're gonna use the stacking wax to basically bond, in this case, a piece of quarter inch plate glass to the piece of glass that I want to cut and drill through with a minimum of chipping. With a heat gun, I need to warm both pieces of glass. This is why I did not use the propane torch. Your glass is going to be far more valuable than this piece of three-quarter inch plate glass. What I'm doing is warming the glass a little so that I can melt the, the wax onto it. I'm going to start to melt the wax let it drip onto the glass. You can see I am working on a piece of cardboard. I just don't want wax all over my workbench. But once it's wax is hot enough, I'm going to bring my glass down onto it. heating this glass to heat the wax beneath it. It's already pretty well stuck. So I need to keep heating to get all that wax liquid. Now you can see it's starting to get hot enough to move, which is ideal, it's what I want. If you're only cutting in one particular place, really that's the only place you need to worry about the wax. Since I'm going to do several different illustrations with this wax, with this block of glass, I want to get most of the bubbles out so that I can use the whole surface. Now you can see as I squeeze on it, if it's possible to see, those bubbles are chasing out. And since I'm going to be doing some selective uh, drilling and cutting, I may have the ability to just avoid any bubbles that will be left. But the better the job you do with this, the more success you'll have. The wax layer does not need to be very thick. In fact, thin is better. Because you want, as close as you can, glass to glass contact. Now that your glass is stacked, and I'm just stacking one side in this case, because I'll be drilling from both sides just to illustrate the chipping and blowout that you probably have already experienced but how it can be minimized with the stacking wax. Now, if you can see, there are some tiny little bubbles in there. They look like little shiny spots. So I'm going to be doing my best to drill away from those. And I'm also, in a later step, going to cut with a diamond saw. So you can see how this actually protects your glass from chipping and blow out using the diamond saw. Clean up is very easy. Your handy friend acetone. A little bit here and you should be able to clean the surface of the glass so that you can see what's going on inside and also you'll have a flat clean surface to be setting it on, drilling through, whatever. Also going to be demonstrating these little suction cup dams. Excuse my language. With a little bit of water. This is water, not wine. I just want to get this wet. I'm going to apply it to the glass. 
Now this is going to form a nice suction. There may be a little bubble in there, it doesn't matter as long as it's holding. I'll be able to pour water in here and we do have them in different sizes but you want the appropriate size so that I can be able to drill right through here. Starting with the drill press and quite seriously this is a very inexpensive drill press that I bought from Northern Tool but Harbor Freight. You don't need precision, you don't need a CNC drill press but you do need to protect it from rusting because everything we're going to do is wet. I'm going to be drilling through a dam with the electroplated drill bit. Now put that in, tighten that up. Don't lose your chuck key. Now I'm just going to drill a simple hole. I'm going to go all the way through the glass. In this case, there should be some blowout on the bottom of the glass, but the top of my good glass will be protected. Need a little water in my dam. And secondly, I do have a box that I've waterproofed, so when it goes through, water is not going to spill all over. I still try to do my best to keep the drill assembly, the drill press assembly, as dry as possible. This may be noisy, so if I don't talk too much, you won't miss it. Maybe it's not too loud. You very slowly kiss the glass. And again, slow is always your friend. Now the change in sound is where I just went through the top glass now into my good glass. And I'm through. In this case now, I'm just going to break the seal on this. That'll let the water out. And here is the glass, and there is the blowout. This is what you want to avoid when you're drilling into your glass. This time, I'm going to do something different. I set my stop on the drill press so that when I go through, I will go through my glass and just into the bottom piece of glass so it won't blow out the back. It doesn't really matter if you blow out the back because you have this sacrificial piece of glass on there. But I just want to show you another way of controlling the drilling process. So again, I'm just going to be drilling straight through need a little more water. And you saw how the, how the water got very cloudy from the ground glass. That's why I have a continual up and down motion because I want to be able to flush out where I'm grinding through the glass to get that out so that there's nothing binding in there. If you don't do that, it does wear out the drill bit a lot faster. So, once again, here we go. Now that change in sound means I'm gone through my good glass and I'm into the base glass. 
And you can see here that I'm almost through to the distance I wanted to go. And that's as far as I'm going. And one thing you'll see is that I've just kissed the quarter inch piece of glass. If you look through, you can see that it's just barely into it. You can see the top of the glass is not that bad, but there is a little chipping in there. And when we take the waxed glass off, you should find that the other side of this hole, where we went through the witness glass first, the sacrificial glass, you should have a better surface. This is a Husqvarna Superlock blade, which causes the least chipping that we have. One closest to the end is where the sacrificial glass is on top. Now I'm going to make cuts and the outermost will be the result plate. Now, before I slide this sample glass off, you can see the chips. This is the top surface, and this is the bottom surface going through the saw. This is the top of the core drill going straight through. This is the bottom where I did not go straight through. So this surface should have the same kind of chips and all. Once I slide this glass off and clean the wax off, we'll be able to compare the glass side to the non-glass side. And again, a long time. Now, you notice I'm heating it up quickly enough that this top surface glass just cracked because of the cracks generated from the cuts. So now this top sample glass will come off in three pieces. Maybe more if it breaks more. Yep. One down. Two down. Now that I have the glass off, I need to let this cool down before I start attacking it with acetone. I don't want to do more damage to my base piece of glass. You can see right here, it did crack. And that was from the heat probably going into either the saw cut or the hole and heating my base glass. A good thing to do would be to heat it up more slowly. You can do that in an oven or a kiln, usually heat it up to the point where the glass is, is soft and then you can go in and slide it off. So now I just need to let this cool off and then we'll check out the surfaces. This is the side that had no protection. And you can see the different saw blades, the amount of chipping, the outer one are the result blades, the inner one is the Husqvarna Superlock, which is just a wonderful blade. Now, where it was protected by the glass, you can see in both cases, far less or no chipping at all. And the same thing is true with the holes. This is the one where we drilled this direction 
through the sample glass, has very, very little chipping there. 